springtime and it's one of my favourite times of the year, mainly due to the abundance of wildflowers. But this time of the year can also still bring high winds and today they are exceptionally strong. But that doesn't deter our walkers and 17 members of Newton Abbott Ramblers braved the winds to do what is a classic walk full of coastal scenery with a visit to Burr Island. Mike and Noni are our leaders today and the usual introductory talk is in full swing. So let's have a closer look at our route. From the car park, we walk through Ringmore, past Nodden Mill, crossing fields and along pathways until we reach Kingston. From here, we head down towards the coast and alongside the river and estuary and onto the southwest coast path. We continue along this pathway, visiting Westcombe Beach, Aimer Cove and Chalabra before reaching Bigbury. We then cross the sands to Burr Island. After a tour of the island, it's back across the sands, retracing our steps to Chalabra and heading back up to the car park at Ringmore. Ringmore was first mentioned in the Doomsday Book, where it is referred to as Rearmore. Until 1908, there was a manor or a state but due to the lack of a lord of the manor, there are no official written records of the past of the village. This church was built in around 1240, and the tower added in the 1400s. It boasts of a rare medieval wall mural. Our first glimpse of the sea, but we have a fair distance to walk before we get to the coast. Leaving the village behind. Quite a steep uh, hill to negotiate, but not too bad. And we initially stride out across fields, but are soon onto more recognisable pathways. This one's leading to the disused cottage at Nodden Mill. The water mill and the disused cottage were joined. It is thought that the mill pond was a little higher up the valley, probably being powered by an overshot water wheel. This means the water is brought in over the top of the water wheel, as in the on-screen diagram. Coming up to a walk through the trees now. The mill served the villagers, as well as the farm of Nodden. Our track now goes through a woodland area, known as the Oakenberry Plantation. It is steep in places, but quite picturesque with the spring flowers. <laughs> We're back in the open countryside and in amongst the hedgerows we derive a certain amount of shelter from the strong gusty winds. On the coast we will be far more exposed. The pathways are fairly well marked and easy to follow, although it would be nice to have where they lead and the distances on the markers. Hey? Kingston over there. We're getting close to civilization on the outskirts of Kingston a small rural village of around 300 residents. It is also home to only one of two volunteer fire stations left in Devon. Something that is particularly interesting to me as I spent nearly 30 years in the service. For those interested, the second volunteer fire station is Heartland in North Devon. Our route now takes us through part of the village and there is a little road walking before once more we head out into the countryside and across fields, making our way to the coast. <laughs> the hedgerows here 
are full of May blossom. The trouble is there's so much of it this time of the year, we sometimes tend to take it for granted. The River Urn comes into view, but this is just about as close as it gets. But the views of the estuary on beyond are quite stunning. That is some view. It's time for a coffee stop. Some of our party are called back. Norman seems to be in ramming mode. Characters like him make the group what it is. But it's also a chance for us to take in the scenery. But very quickly we continue our walk. We will shortly be joining the southwest coast path and we shall continue along this path until we reach Bigbury and are crossing to Burr Island. This is absolutely fantastic, although it's crikey it is not windy. There are numerous beaches along the coast. Some are accessible and some are not. The first beach we'll be visiting is Westcombe Beach, which will be our lunch stop. Very quickly, Burt Island comes Sorry, into view, and even from this distance, I can see that the tide has already started to ebb, and the sands should be well exposed when we make our crossing to the island. Oh, just out of the wind a little bit now. I can at least breathe. Today, on this walk, is not a place to be if you've just had your hair done. The wind is so bad, in places, we have to literally hang on to some of our lighter ladies, who almost get blown over. In some places, there is a choice of pathways, some close to the cliff edge, and others that go slightly further inland with the exceptional winds and in the interests of safety where possible we choose these inland pathways mine is streaming there is always a photo opportunity it delays mean increasing your pace in an effort to catch up or right on a flat walk or more demanding on this type of terrain. But generally speaking, leaders will always okay, wait for you. The coastal path between the estuary of the River Urn and Bigbury more or less follows the coastal line and is a succession of steep ascents and descents. And whether you like walking or otherwise, you can't fail to be impressed by the truly magnificent and breathtaking scenery there is on this part of the South Devon coast. Westcombe Beach is now in front of us. It's a steep descent down to the beach itself, either by a zigzag pathway or a more direct route, which most of us take. Our walkers are quite strung out, and it takes a little while for all of them to descend this steep pathway. But eventually they all get down.
then it's just a case of trying to find a place out of the wind to eat lunch. The cliffs on each side of us and the beach itself are impressive. Access is either from Kingston, Oakenbury or Ringmore, although it is not the easiest beach to get to at any time. While some of us get on with lunch, others want to dip their toes in the sea. The next part of our walk involves quite a steep, slow climb. There's an old saying you can't go down without having to go up. And here it's most definitely true. We all tackle these steep climbs in different ways. Some try a slow rhythm approach, others are frequent stops. Whichever way, it's just steep and it's tiring, but it's got to be done. So you just get on with it. But as we get higher, we can see clearly how pathways zigzag up and down on the cliff opposite. reaching the top of the cliff, and we get a fleeting glimpse of the next beach we call at, Amar Cove. It's all lovely. Burr Island also continues to get closer, with more and more of the sand being exposed by the ebbing tide. There now follows another steep descent to Aymar Cove. From the top centre to the right of the picture, Smugglers Lane can be seen, which is the access path to the beach from Ringmore. The area around Aymar Cove is a wildlife haven. Adders, dragonflies, dormice and the rare soil bunting. The cove itself at low tide is full of rock pools. The route from Amar Cove to Toby's Point has in the past given the National Trust and the Southwest Coast Path Association cause for concern due to the erosion of the cliff. And as late as 2012, this was an issue. It was proposed to move the adjacent fence in landslidely to provide more space for path users. I think this has been done but the fence still remains quite close to the cliff edge. It was quite a hard climb up from Amon Cove and a short break is called for at Toby's Point. It allows me to get a few stills of some of our group. Before we move on to Chalabra. The beach at Chalabur is one that is more easily accessed than some on our route today, and therefore is more popular and definitely more commercialised. Part of that commercialisation is largely due to the caravan park. Our closest view yet of Burr Island, the pathways and the chapel on the top can now easily be seen. The sands are now well exposed and ideal for making the 250 metre crossing to the island. The top layer of sand has dried out, allowing the wind to whip the surface up and create an almost sandblasting effect to those people having their legs exposed. Quite painful at times. The Island Hotel was built in 1929 and extended in 1932. 
and now has been restored in the 30s Art Deco glamour. When the causeway is covered, the island is approached by sea tractor. I like to come the easy way. This particular one was built in 1969. Our walkers have now split into several groups, some staying in the Pilchard Inn for a coffee, but most making their way to the summit of the island. On early records and maps, it was known as St Michael's Island, which was later changed to Borough Island eventually being corrupted to Burr Island. It is believed that a monastery was established on the island. Most of the remains are supposed to lie beneath the current hotel. Although I can't verify this, following the dissolution of the monastery, a small population of fishermen occupied the island, specialising in pilchard fishing. On the summit, there is the remains of a chapel, which became a hewer's hut. This is a lookout station, a place where fishermen made a hue and cry to inform other fishermen that shoals of pilchards have been sighted. Within the disused hut is an information board giving the island history. Our walkers have now finished their short tour of the island and regrouped. After admiring the extensive views towards the mainland, Bantam Sands and beyond, they're now going to make their way back to the Pilchard Inn. Except for one pair of unfortunates who thought they would give me the benefit of their singing experience. Always look on the bright side of life. But up, but up, but up, but up. <laughs> what can I say? Pilchard Inn was supposed to have been the favourite haunt of a well-known smuggler, Tom Crocker, who it is said was shot at the door of the inn by other smugglers or the preventative. All this is hearsay, of course, and cannot be confirmed. Everyone is now ready to cross back over the sands. The tide seems to have gone out even further. All that now remains is for us to have a last look at Burr Island and retrace our steps back to Chalabra and make our way back to the car park at Ringmore. We seem to have come to the end another of another walk. Apart from the windy conditions, it's another been an almost perfect day. Yeah.